For over six years, Mike Greenfield of Pro Home Cooks cooked in a tiny, galley-style kitchen in his Brooklyn apartment. So that's like my aspirations are to have a kitchen that is organized, but also, you know, somewhat there for entertaining. Six years and several millions of views later, he got the chance to build out his dream kitchen studio to take his production to the next level. I sat down to chat with Mike about his new space and have him give us all a tour of what I'm calling the coolest kitchen studio in New York City. That is perfection. So I moved into this space about six months ago and um, it was all just white walls. Um, so I had to customize a lot of stuff. I built a lot of things from scratch, um, built a lot of things with my dad. My dad's a woodworker um, and it was a blast doing it. So I'm just going to take you through. Um, this is like my boosted board parking, custom little shelf here and then hang up uh, you know, book bags and coats. So that's my parking spot basically, how I get to work. This is the office area. Um, this is a custom standing desk, so I built the, uh, the tabletop. This is all natural wood here. So yeah, so it's kind of like, it's a complete studio. So it's, uh, you know, editing station, workstation, kitchen, and then I sort of have like a lounge area for meetings and whatever, you know, goes on in the lounge area. So moving uh, out of the office area and into the lounge area, this is actually new. These are a really cool acoustical solution. I was looking for artwork or like a living wall. I had a bunch of ideas. And then uh, this company, uh, GIK, they make these really cool artistic acoustic panels. Um, and all of the acoustic work in here has happened in the last week. And it sounds great. So this is an awesome solution that looks good, but also solves a sound issue. I wanted this space to feel homey because it's called Pro Home Cooks, my channel. It's not just, uh, it's not just like some commercial kitchen. So I wanted to give it a homey feel. And I think that's a big part of this area. I actually don't live too far away from here. Gowanus is like an up and coming area in Brooklyn, which is why there's so much construction here for a few months, but it's calmed down. And now I've got a nice quiet street here, which is great, but it's awesome to have natural lighting. When it comes to food, you can't beat natural lighting. All of this ambient light coming in um, is fantastic for shooting. So now we are entering the kitchen um, and it's a pretty simple setup. It's just one wall, a lot of shelving. Everything is open. I wanted it to be friendly and fun on camera and that's what I tried to create. So over here, it's just all of like, you know, the smaller appliances um, in this shelf. All of these shelves are custom. We've got pot rack over here. This is sort of like the star of the show, I would say. This is the centerpiece of the studio. I built this uh, table with my dad and it's kind of cool because he's a woodworker and I cook for a living. So this table is almost like a combination of two um, trades, woodworking and cooking, because it's you can't really find something like this. It's almost like a, um, a work table, like a woodworking table converted for a kitchen. And I love it, it's on wheels so I can stroll it over to the natural light um, and get really great shots. And also it's just easy to clean the place when it's on wheels. And there's nothing better, this is something I dreamed of. I know you asked that question. This table, having a big workspace, that's something I dreamed of when I had a small little kitchen. Everyone wants a big ass table to just roll pasta or roll dough. Um, so this, this table has been just amazing. Um, induction burner over here, um, shelving here. So this shelving was reclaimed when I moved into the studio. I saw this big banister 
and I asked the landlord if I could have the wood, and he's like, yeah, if you, <laughs> if you sign the lease, you can have the wood. So this was in really rough shape and I send it, I put it through the planer and sanded it down and it's like 150 years old and it's just super thick and structural and you can see all of these nail marks um, and it just worked out great for shelving. And then I just attached these little metal pipes to hang some utensils. And I, I like having everything on camera. I like having it just visible so I can pick it right off the shelf and use it. Um, and then this, I, we did a custom mosaic. I worked with an artist, a friend of mine, um, and she made this mosaic. This is 4th Ave, 9th Street. It's the closest subway. And then this says Gowanus, um, which is Gowanus. Uh, that's the neighborhood we're in. And then this is a little custom rack um, my dad made and it holds all of the olive oil and vinegar. I've got the knife block here. I really like this. This was a design element that I added just to spice up the kitchen space a little bit. Originally the plan was to have this uh, countertop butt right up against the, the fridge but it just felt too basic. Um, so I created this little uh, shelving to enclose the kitchen. And I think I saw this on Pinterest, something similar where the bookshelf was sort of wrapping around the fridge. And I thought it was such a cool idea to have cookbooks right in the kitchen. Um, and it's one of my favorite parts. And I think it just gives the kitchen a sort of uniqueness. And you know, you can load up the shelves. It, it adds a lot of color. It's just good. Again, having shelving on film is awesome. And it just makes me happy. Um, fridge, speaking of more shelving, I built this thing um, and it's awesome. It's a spice rack um, and it holds my aprons as well. These are like magnets, all of the spices here. Now this is the fermentation area, um, sort of storage pantry fermentation area. Uh, and you know, one of my favorite things to do on my channel is food projects, fermentation stuff, bread making, beer making, cheese making, uh, kombucha making, jam. And I actually have most of those going right now. So I can show you a few pro projects, but you know, you want generally with fermentation and aging, you don't need light. You don't want light. So I put this area away from the, the natural light. Um, so it wouldn't interfere with any of the fermentation bacteria and yeast. They don't like um, intense, you know, sun rays, UV rays and stuff like that. So just to take you through, we've got kombucha brewing. These are some bottled kombuchas right here. Let's see, they might need to be burped. Yep, look at that. Oh, come on. That's a perfect, I might just have to drink that right there. That is perfection. This is really exciting down there. Yesterday, I just bottled all of these beers. These are hazy IPAs. Um, so they finished fermenting after two weeks. Um, they're all bottled. They'll bottle carbonate for like seven more days and then they'll go in the fridge. So it's been a while since I brewed beer. Um, and it was one of the things I was really excited about to get in the studio and just be able to do bigger projects in an easier fashion. And then this is, this is exciting. I actually haven't checked this in a few days, so we'll see what's going on. This is my cheese cave. So it is uh, temperature and uh, humidity controlled. So it's set at about 50 degrees and 80% humidity, just like a cave would be. It's uh, moist and it's cold. And I've got two cheeses in there now, and they've been aging for like, two weeks. I've got this guy I just did a video on. It's so crazy because I've never made cheese. Um, and it's like you see mold and you think that's going to be bad, but then you smell it and you're like, Wait, but it smells like cheese. <laughs> and it's just, it's just fascinating because when you put it in there, it doesn't smell like cheese, like aged cheese. It doesn't smell funky. And right when the mold starts growing, it smells like cheese. This is something I dreamed of having, the space to just make cheese. Um, and I want this entire fridge just filled with um, aged cheeses. That would be that would be a dream. And then this, I want to be, this isn't finished yet, this will be a kegerator. 
um, for homemade beer and kombucha so I don't have to bottle it all. If I want to just put it on the keg and then people come over and um, you know I can just serve them up with like serve you up a fresh beer or a kombucha. I think that would be really cool. And that is, hope that's a video I wanna do soon on all of that process. Um, this is just like tripod and, you know, some cleaning supply organization. Oh, this, this is the last thing. We'll finish off with this. Subway sign. So this is a, a custom designer. He makes these and they hook into the MTA system and this is actually legitimate. What you're seeing here are the real subway times for the local subway. That's just like a few blocks. So if guests come over, if they're trying to catch a subway, they could be like, oh, R train leaving, or F train leaving in 10 minutes. Let me head out, I'll catch the F train. And it also just looks so cool and people are very confused and interested in it. So I like when people ask questions, they're like, what the hell is that sign that's hanging in your kitchen? That's it. Any other questions? Thing I hated the most that I would just complain to my wife about all the time is, is being blocked off from everything. For me, I like entertaining. I like being with people. And like I had this little galley style kitchen, you know, from the 1900s. And um, I would be in there and it was really built for one. It's like built on efficiency, which is fine for cooking, but it's just boring. And it's like, I'm staring at a wall. And it's like, I feel like I'm cooking for the first time in six years. It was harder for me to enjoy just being in there because I was by myself. So with this space, it's like, I don't feel claustrophobic. Like I can be in here all day um, and not feel like I gotta get the hell out of here. Whereas the small kitchen was like, get in, get the job done and get out of there. I think a lot of people like live in cities, you know, say they live in New York and you have a shitty little kitchen. It's not, most people do, small yeah. little kitchen, but it's not hard to make a kitchen more efficient. Really to cook for a hundred people, you could do it in like a two by four space. You don't need that much space um, to cook amazing meals. So it's just like hang up some shelves, you know? Always shelving over cabinets where things get stored away. It's like so much more organized if you can see things and then you just grab them. Especially when you're cooking, it's like, you wanna just be able to pop, boom, and rather than like, oh, what the hell do I have in there? If it's in there, you might never see it again. Overall, I, I wanted a space where I could just produce more content and this, you know, is built for filming. I have, uh, you know, I have production lighting in here. I have um, high quality sound acoustical treatment. Um, I've got space. So overall, it's like I can take what I was doing to the next level. And I think on YouTube nowadays, that's what it's about. If you want to survive as a YouTuber, it's like you have to step up your game because there's other bigger productions that understand YouTube now. And they have so many more resources than private creators like you, like me. So you got to find some middle ground and you got to keep up with content. You got to produce for algorithms and all these things. So this place gives me the ability to just produce more. And when I moved in here, it was almost like my business completely shifted overnight and I didn't really know what to do because I went from a space where I only, I had to shift everything around in my apartment to film. And then, you know, then I'd have to shift it back. So I could only film so much and then, okay, then I'll edit for the rest of the days. Now, you know, when I moved in here, I'm like, oh, I can't be editing all the time because I can be cooking and filming stuff all the time. So I think just in general, it's, this opens up more opportunity for more content, which is good, which is what I want to grow into. But it takes kind of, it takes time to grow into that and figure that puzzle out. Another reason I did want to open this space up was just to bring people over like you, for instance, so much easier. You contact me. I'm like, yeah, come over. Whereas if it's my apartment, it's a little weird. Um, and I just wasn't collaborating. So it's very easy to collaborate too. So I think at first I just want to figure out my own production, how I can use the space and then I can move on to figuring out the other stuff.
Yeah, I mean, this space was pretty much just a square, you know, a big, a big, sorry, a big rectangle, white walls. So in a way, it's a little tricky because it's tricky and it's easy. Like it's tricky in the sense that um, there's endless op options because it's just a rectangle. Um, and then it's easy in the sense that you can do whatever you want. I looked online, I looked on Pinterest, different kitchens, and I kind of got like the main, I knew I wanted the kitchen on this wall. This is where like the plumbing and electric, I had to make that decision. Um, and I kind of just started designing a kitchen and I just started looking at ideas and like, you know, build, you know building things in my head, furniture, like this island. And then I just started going for it. And then the rest, like the fermentation area, I kind of left that up for interpretation in the moment. So that kind of, this was more planned because of the appliances needed space. And then that area just like, I just wung it and you know went for it. I think one great thing about this space is that it has created more of like a schedule, which I think is good. You know, as a YouTuber, like, you can get real deep into the artistic world, the, that side of like, oh, I don't have a schedule and you know, whatever, run my own business or freelance. But I like the structure this has brought me of just basically having a nine to five job. I come in and I get to work because this is a workspace, so it's very efficient. And it, it you know, rather than working for my apartment, it's hard when you're working from home because there's always that home essence that could relax you a bit <laughs> you know oh maybe i'll just watch a little netflix for you know for a minute and then all of a sudden three hours later it's like here that's not happening i have a culinary producer she comes in alex and we're you know testing recipes or editing or you know working on whatever um, but it's really just yeah normal work days i mean sometimes longer much longer than nine to five but Sometimes not. <laughs> like this morning, for instance, I got in super early and was just building sound panels for the ceiling. Um, and that took half my morning. So yeah, it's all just work. The sound acoustical treatment was one of my last things that I really needed to do. So I'm very pumped. That was like the last week getting that all worked out. I still need a little bit more there. Um, and it sounds so much better in here. It's crazy. This is the first thing ever filmed with the acoustics. Um, and it's just like speaking. It's like, it's, it's I, I didn't know anything about that. So now I really am aware and it's like, oh, it sounds really nice, which is cool. And then a little bit more lighting I wanna work on. Um, I think that's it. It's gonna be weird when it's kind of finished, but that's the beauty. It's like once it's finished, then you know I can focus on just production and efficiency and all of that. Whereas, you know, when I was building it, especially, it was just chaos, like trying to keep the channel up and you know building it out and doing all of that at the same time. Not the easiest, but yeah, excited to be finished and cruising along with content.